Hi there, welcome back to Cory Paper Crafts. It's Karen here, Independent Stampin' Up Demonstrator in Central Scotland. Today's project is uh, once again all about dinosaurs and our retiring 2018 to 20 in colours. So I'm making some projects just to use these up because I think they work really well with the Dino Days stamp set and the, the Dino Roar designer series paper which is also retiring. We're into the last week now of this year's annual catalogue and um, next week our new annual catalogue launches. So these in colours are retiring as is the paper but the good news is that the Dino, Dino Days stamp set and the Dino Dies are carrying on into the new catalogue but the, the one and a half inch circle punch is also retiring, so that's another uh, item that you should get now if you really want to. And the in colour grow green ribbons are also going. So um, I thought I would use up some of my bits and pieces while they're still available as far as I'm aware at the point of filming anyway they're still available to order if it's something that you want. I think I'll be stocking up on the DSP because it's it's a firm favourite of mine although I was late to this suite I didn't order it straight away. So the only colour that's missing from here this is lovely lipstick, this is grapefruit grove, we have call me clover and blueberry bushel so the only colour that's missing is pineapple punch and I'm going to show you how I made the the box using pineapple punch just now. So I'm going to stand all these boxes just at the top here out of the way and bring in my pineapple punch and my scoreboard. So you're going to need a piece of cardstock which measures eight and a half inches by eight and a quarter inches. I've got a few marks on this I'm not sure why but never mind. So in terms of scoring, on the long side, the eight and a half inch side, you're going to score at two, four, six and eight. And I don't think I told you the measurements of the box. It measures two inches square and it's five inches in height here. So it's quite a decent sized box for filling with treats or whatever you want to put in it. So then turn it to the short side here and score at one and three quarters and at six and three quarters and then flip the card over and score at seven and three quarters. Then flip it back and turn it back to the long side again so you'll have that last score line, that half inch one along the top here and you're just going to add extra score lines at one inch just down to that first score line and at five inches same again just down to that last score line and that's all your scoring done. So let's get this out of the way without bumping the tripod and then fold and burnish on all those score lines. And this score line here and then this one here folds back on itself. That's the line that you scored the opposite way. So once you've finished you should have something that looks like this. And we scored that one the opposite way so that it folds the opposite way here to make that part at the top. Okay, so cutting. Keeping this half inch section at the top here because this is the top of the box. This is the bottom of the box here and you have four equal squares in this small rectangle. So we're going to remove this small rectangle. I need to move my boxes out of the way because they're getting in the way of moving my cardstock around. So I'm just going to remove this rectangle here and take that score line as I go and just cut at an angle there and then turn to the top of that half inch section and cut at a slight angle there as well. And these two pieces of card here are the only waste that you have from the cardstock that you're making your box with. 
So once we've angled this, that's what you're left with. And then to form the base of the box, I'm just going to cut straight up these score lines to meet that horizontal score line. And anything overhanging, once I've finished the box, I'll just trim with my paper snips because I want the, the bottom sections all to be equal. So that's what we're left with once we've done our cutting. Okay, so I'm going to add some pieces of designer series paper to that. And what you'll need for your box is four pieces that measure um, one and three quarter inches by four and three quarter inches. And then you'll need two smaller pieces which measure one and three quarters by three quarters. Okay, and we're going to add all of these onto these sections here. And then these smaller pieces we're actually going to put in this section here. Oops, not upside down though. We're avoiding the sections with these score lines here because these are actually the side panels of my box. So this is going to be the front panel here once we've folded all the box together. And I'm just going to double check that. And I'm hoping you can see a little bit better because I've adjusted the angle of my camera slightly. Um, so yes, this is going to be the front section. So I just want to pick the piece of paper that I like the best, which I think is that one there. And then I'm going to just pop the rest on like that. So I'm going to use... Oops multi-purpose glue, liquid glue, and I'm just going to stick these on as quickly as I can, but I want to make sure I've got glue in all the corners, so oops, so that they stay stuck down, and I've just made a fine mess of my box because I dropped that, which is just not fabulous at all. I'm glad that's the bottom of the box and any excess I'll get with my adhesive eraser once we're finished but that was that was lucky. <laughs> I always get covered in glue you should know that by now but I really didn't mean to drop that. So again just making sure I get glue into those corners without dropping it this time. Oh, I really wish I could make something without without getting covered in glue. But I think I'm just destined to always be covered in blue and glue. I think I've managed one project recently that I didn't get covered in glue. Just catching into those corners. There we are. And that looks about right. So I'm going to leave it well alone. If it looks okay, I'm going to leave it at that. And then my smaller sections are going to go on here, avoiding the, the two sections with the scores in them. Come on glue. Just make sure that doesn't squish out. And pop that bit. On there. Oops. So I'm going to put the lid on my glue and as I said this is the front section of my box here so I'm going to add some tear and tape onto that section 
and I'm going to add a couple of pieces so I'm going to add one piece close to the edge at the front or at the, the edge and another piece about there so I already know that if that's my front flap that goes down last these are both the side flaps that will tuck inside so this is going to be the back flap so I'm going to turn this over as well and I'm going to add a couple of pieces of tape to either side of the back flap because that saves any gaping at the side of the bottom of the box and I'll just show you what I mean on one of these boxes I wanted extra height which means the base doesn't fit completely but that's okay because I wanted that extra quarter of an inch in the height here but by adding some tape onto the sides of that back panel that one's just not stuck down very well it saves gaping here if the box is squeezed so that's why I've done that okay so I just need one more piece of tape along the fold here but as always not actually on the fold and I'm just going to make sure that I give it a good press when I make those score lines and then I'm ready to join my box together so I'm going to fold this section over remove the backing tape just turn in any overlapping bits of tape and press it all together so again this seam here goes to the back and I've already put my tape on my front and back section so I'm just going to fold in the two sides then I'm going to fold in the back and just give that a press like so to catch it in place and then that front panel is the last panel to come over like so and then I'm just going to give all that press down making sure that I just catch those side panels in place and if there's anything overlapping at the bottom once I've put my box together and I can see a tiny tiny bit there I'm just going to take that off with my paper snips and then because I've scored these little sections here that makes sure that I can push those sides in and fit that lid together nice and neatly and this actually does fold completely flat here and it would actually hold itself closed but I'm going to punch a couple of holes in it with my crocodile um, because when I punch, as you can see, I'm going to be punching through four thicknesses of cardstock. And I'm using the one eighth of an inch side rather than the um, quarter inch side. And I've set that to half an inch so that it goes in half an inch from each side and the same again oops it's sticking to my gluey fingers that's what's wrong and just making sure that I line that up um, to get the holes kind of even and then my um, pineapple punch ribbon oh, which I've just put my crocodile on top of. I'm going to tie the top together. Just grab my ribbon scissors because I've got a glue dot on there to hold it together. So making sure that I've got the seam at the back so that this is the front of my box. I'm going to pop my ribbon through from the front. like that and then keeping it straight I'm going to bring it back through to the front again and I just want to make sure that I haven't kinked it there um, about there I think so all I want to do is tie it in a bow 
Um, I'm going to use a punch just to hold that up against because if I pull it towards my tummy it's likely to go out of shot and just tie a bow like so and just make sure I'm happy with the loops and then make sure the bow's in the centre between those two holes and just adjust these loops until I'm happy with them and I'm happy with that so I'm just going to trim this end to about the same length and it doesn't really matter whoops, how long your bow is how long the tails of your bow are rather it's entirely up to you because it's it's your box just want that pulled a little bit tighter so there we are so that's my box made and then as I said I used the Dino Days photopolymer stamp set and I've used um, this dinosaur and these stickles for his back and your Rorsum and I've also stamped those ahead of time but that's the stamps in there I'm so pleased that these are carrying on because I've not finished using them yet so I've stamped ahead of time and die cut my dinosaur and the dinosaur and the stickles are stamped and die cut separately and then you join them together it's really quite clever and I've just stamped your Rorsum in the coordinating pineapple punch ink and just sponged around the edges to take that stark whiteness off I've popped dimensionals on the back and just to quickly let you see the dies I think I have shown these in another video so I'm just going to show them really quickly this is the dinosaur and these are the stickles um, that I used for this project but you've got half of a, a broken egg and, and other dinosaurs as well so um, I'm certainly not finished using these quite yet so again just double checking that that's definitely the front of my box add my dinosaur onto the bottom of my box I just oops, stamped him onto whisper white card stock so pop him about there and then you roar some somewhere near the top in the middle like so and that's my box made so that's the missing colour so if we sit them all together it lets you see all five in colours together really bright and cheerful and lots of those colours are in the designer series paper. I did use the back side of one of the sheets to do this box here because this is um, the back of one, of one of the sheets but I think I like the actual dinosaurs. So that's my box. Thanks for watching. If you've not already subscribed then I would love it if you would. I'm aiming for 250 subscribers and I'm almost there so uh, I'm setting small goals each time I reach a particular goal so thanks to those that have subscribed already and until I see you again later in the week take care and bye bye for now.